We don't have to reinvent manhood. God gave us the picture of the greatest man ever in King Jesus. We just got to point to him. Brother, we are in cahoots with the creator of the universe. God said, you know what? I'm going to do something and we're going to do it together. What we get an opportunity to do as, as collaborators with God is to be a mimicker that you can touch. Come on. I have desired, I have sought after, I have wanted that kind of men to be in my life and to nurture me so much and didn't get it, mm. that it made me determined to be that for someone else. I love that. You're not playing the role of a victim. You're not saying, because I didn't get this, now I can't do anything about right. it. You're saying, no, 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 I'm gonna be that head start for others. Again, that's a picture of the gospel. It's a picture of redemption. It's a picture of restoration. You're gonna take all that the locusts have eaten and you're gonna make sure they don't eat that much in the future for somebody else. It's beautiful. Hey fam, welcome to the Dr. Chris Harper show. So glad you're here. Remember uh, in the show notes, you can click the link uh, to follow the newsletter and i'm super hyped about today's show because uh man we've got a a man of god on the show we've got a guy that that's taken his god-given gifts his talents and man he's taking ground for king jesus so uh mr cameron arnett how are you today my guy man i am so well and i love what you just said there because it is god-given gifts and it is king jesus you know what i'm saying and i think Come that on. that is what makes everything the way that it should be. Once we understand that we have a king and our duty is to be obedient to that king, everything else begins to fall into place. It's when we think that this is a religion and when we mm. think we have options, when we think that we can vote, um, things go by the wayside. And we, we, we've we seen the, the, the problem with the church because of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's such a word, bro. He's, he's not just savior, but he's Lord. He's Lord. He can't Both. even be savior unless, unless he's Lord. Come on. <laughs> hey, that's that's that every tongue will confess, every knee will bow. <laughs> that's right. And I'll tell you, I, I tell men all the time, you'll either bow because of the mercy and grace he gives you, or you'll bow because that iron scepter shatters that kneecap. But either way, you bow. <laughs> you're going to bow. bow. <laughs> you know, one, one at one point you have a choice, and the other one there is none. That's right. That's so, man. That's so true. And 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 let me just tell you, brother, what I love, what I love about you. I, you know, I've always kind of had a bone to pick with Christian creatives, because to your point, we serve this great King, right? Mm -hmm. So everything we sh we do should be done in in excellence. And 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 I hate it when I see Christian creatives, Christian artists, they kind of skate by. Mm -hmm. because they love Jesus, but they're not really good at their craft. Mm -hmm. Man, I've been following you, watching your movies, watching your process, and 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 I'm seeing a man that, that not only loves King Jesus, but he's really, really good at what he does. It's bad man, theology. And I just want to encourage you. <clears throat> Thank you, I, and I appreciate that, because it's really bad theology, bad doctrine, bad understanding, because we find out, through Christ, through through the, the scriptures, that you know you're dealing with uh, men who had an excellent spirit, yeah, and that's what made them different. That's what made them the the epitome of what the the that God wants. And so we end up with you know Joshua and Caleb and people like that, and give me the mountain and have a backbone, and they're they're, they're you know they're, they're excellent at and, and different, you have, you're have you dealing with Daniel who had an excellent spirit, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, people mm. who made the world take notice because of their excellence. Come on. And then we come into Christ and we think that we can just water this thing down and be, you know, that'll do. That's and right. And that's just bad theology, man. And and excellence is the entrance into a, a, a world that excellence is their God. Mm. When you gotta compete, if you can't compete and surpass their level, they don't want to know your God. That's right. And uh, until it's like, again, back to a Janice and Jambres situation in, in Old Testament, you know what I'm saying? You're going to do mm -hmm. a little whatever you can do. You're going to do whatever you're going to do until you can't do what God is what God is doing. And then you got to say, oh, okay, 
there's something bigger than than I am. And that's what, what we find in true discipleship is understanding that we are meant to be the fullness of the measure of Christ unto the perfect man. That's the whole that's point good. of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is to bring us to that point where we are so much, much like the Jesus we see in scripture that the world takes notice that we have been with him and that we are greater, we're better, we're, 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 we, we live a, 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 in a place of conviction and righteousness and holiness. When you take a look at the church, though, it's almost like I ask myself, is anyone having victory? Come on. And Come on. It, it's it's uh, it's uh, something that we have to learn that that um, yes, yeah, bad theology, man, bad, bad understanding. And, and we have to to get beyond that. Man, that's that's so true. I'm, I'm thinking about Ephesians 2, where it says we are God's workmanship or we are God's craftsmanship, right? The the Greek word for workmanship is poema. It's where we get our English word for poem. It literally says that you and me, we are God's masterpiece. That's right. We are God's masterpiece, man. And, and God is on this great restorative process where he is restoring us back to our original design. What you said, that excellence within us, man, he is bringing that out. Because more than anything, God wants to put his glory on display. That's, that's, the, whole, you know, that's the whole thing. And, and again, man, I, I go, you know, the, the, the Bible says to us, be careful how you hear, because with the same measure you meet, it'll, it'll be measured to you. And so what happens is that we end up listening to people who tell us the greater one lives inside, but we never have to see him on the outside. Come on. I'm sorry. It, 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 it doesn't, it, it gives us the results that we've gotten. That's right. No, the greater one lives inside. Therefore, the enemy shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath. That's right. He is so far above. And we give our enemy such a power that he doesn't have. The, the Bible says that he four principalities. That word means that he divested himself wholly from, which means that Jesus went and took Satan, all demons, and sucked out of them what made them them. That's he right. He was the anointed cherub, but he's just flat on the ground now. And yet he came out and said, the same glory that I had before with my father, I'm giving to you. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. man we're gonna mess we're gonna mess around and take up an offering. <laughs> it's so different. This <laughs> church is so powerful, so great, just like our master, but we haven't we haven't believed him to be such. We haven't taught him to be such. And yeah. it's 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 easier to be lazy and not fulfill your responsibility and That's to right. excuse away all of what you don't get in life. And wait for heaven by and by. Yeah. Um, Settling um, for that, we 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 love to settle for a shortcut. There, there you go. We love to settle for a shortcut. God offers us this man, this this wonderful um, treasure. Yeah. And 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 Satan doesn't need us to hate God. He just needs us to be indifferent. He just needs us to settle for just a little bit of the inheritance. Just a be little placated. Bit. We've domesticated the whole thing. We've domesticated Ooh. Jesus. Ooh, We've boy. domesticated uh, the the church, oh the God. whole nine yards, man. And 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 to your point, I love I love this is how we started, because really the project that that you just finished working on, and and one of the reasons we came together today, the forge, mm -hmm. man, talks about talks about this this king this king jesus men who are who are striving to be like that king but they're just not striving to be like him they're looking at other men and say hey i know the way follow me mm -hmm. come along on this journey that that to timothy 2 where mm -hmm. paul tells timothy man take what i've taught you find faithful men to entrust it with so that then they would teach others you have four generations of discipleship in that one verse Ooh. Paul to Timothy, Timothy to faithful men, faithful men to others. Four generations in that one verse. And multi-generational discipleship is missing from our churches today. We don't it's even missing. know what it looks like, to be honest with you. We have, you know, 80% of what we do in church is not even Bible. And so when when you when you when when you when you deal with that fact, you understand how much God is in love with us and how and that He would use a film like The Forge to show us who we are 
and call us back into being who we are and say, yeah. I still have you as plan A in being who you are. Come so on. all of this is really what I see God doing through through this film is, you know how we talk about an open letter to so-and-so. God is has written an open letter through the Kendricks to the body of Christ worldwide that as I left here, I said, all authority has been given unto me. Therefore, you go and make disciples. Now, as I am preparing to return, I'm coming to you again. And I'm saying, go and make disciples. Yes, so yes. This is where we are, man. And, and we are well able. And, and he still believes that we, we are well able. And he will do for each and every one of us who are willing to believe him, act like him, go after him. I mean, and he'll let us thrive to the nth degree of his mm. glory because that was his intent to begin with. He blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue the earth. That's it. And, and, and God did not change his mind, man. No, no. And he's not, he's not withholding anything from us. Man, he even says in his scriptures, if an earthly father knows how to give good things to his children, how much more do you think I can give to my children, right? All we got to do is ask and possess it. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why men aren't passing it on. Because you can't pass on what you don't possess. You can't. They're not asking for it. They're not asking for it, man. They, they, he, he's offering it. We have to receive it. And then, and then we have to pass it on uh, to, the next, to the next generation. And I'm telling you, we, we have an entire generation and, and I've done all the research about this. We talk about it all the time on the show. Man, we had an entire generation. 41% of young men today have grown up without any type of fatherly guidance. Mm -hmm. They've grown up without any type of spiritual guidance. We have, we have it, I call it a Judges 2 problem. Mm -hmm. Joshua and his generation dies. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says there arose another generation who did not yeah. know God nor the things he had done. So they yeah. did what was right in their own eyes. Yeah. None of it got transferred down. Yep. None of it stuck, right? Yep. And and what I love about your movie, especially man, your 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 part in the movie, your character, really, in my opinion, the main character, the crux of the movie. Um, man, I fell in love with him because I saw creatively what I've been preaching for a decade. Like I saw it through the big screen. Like I'm in the theater. Matter of fact, I was with Jerry and Priscilla in the theater and I jumped up. I said, that's it. Like that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> Man, I was, dude, I, I, I was so hyped. So, so, so tell me how you got um, called to the project and then, and then what you felt about it as you were going through it. Well, you know, I, Extremely blessed, extremely honored, but also extremely humbled because I, I have to tell you how this came about. Of course, you know that I did Overcomer with the Kendricks a while back. And my wife and I, when we were called by God, we, we passed it for two, almost two decades. And the mandate of God upon us was discipleship. Mm -hmm. And so basically, Cameron and BJ Arnett are Joshua Moore and Janelle Moore. And Come so on. that's who we've been. For the last 20, we've been married now for 26 years, 27 years together. The church, we, we've pastored for almost two decades. That's all we've been all this time is discipling people. We've been disciples who are discipling people. And in the four walls of the church, man, we would open our doors 530 in the morning, be in prayer, discipling these young people. We got them. We got them when they were 19, 18. So it's like just like Isaiah and to the point of marrying them, to the point of, I mean, birthing their babies and all kind of stuff throughout those years. And to see God take us from the four walls to the big screen and now going for, from the micro to the macro in the sense of now discipling people globally is humbling and powerful. And what Alex said to me was that when they started putting the story together, the first person they thought about was Cameron Arnett to play this guy. Wow. And so for me, it is humbling and it is also a confirmation and a foretelling mm -hmm. because I know the heart and the desire and the, 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 the mandate that God has put inside of us as husband and wife and to 
it's almost like God is saying, this is who you are. This is who you've been. And now I'm allowing that to come out into the, the mainstream. Yeah. So I'm, I'm extremely um, um, humbled by it, man. And I'm looking forward to what God will do globally with this thing. It Amen. is more than watching a film. It is watching. It is watching God prepare us for His return, and turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons, sons to the fathers. It is. It is us watching the church become herself, and it God doing it globally, all together as once at once. Because it's almost like if you take a look at life, man, there is a global phenomenon of insidious chaos. It's mm-hmm. almost like the world is has has gone amok to, at the same time, yeah. And so and so now there's nowhere to go, and I I think that that God is 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 covering the earth with discipleship at the same time, and we're all going. Oh, this is it, and um and it, it's it's a um kind of a surreal thing to be watching because it's almost you know you 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 give given an opportunity by God to be in the front row. Come on. So yeah, man. And, I, I, and, 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 and I love your posture and humility in that. I think it was Martin Luther who said, he said the Holy spirit comes riding in on the chariot of the gospel and we get to drive the chariot. I mean, how right. amazing is that brother? We are in cahoots with the creator of the universe. Come on. What in the world? I mean, can, you can't even wrap your mind around God said, you know what? I'm going to do something and we're going to do it together. Come on. You don't need me. No. <laughs> no you don't need me. And yet you are allowing me <laughs> to get, you know, some kind of glory with you <laughs> and doing what you've already done that's colossal that I can't do. And you're saying you're my son. I'm giving you credit too. Come okay. on, man. All right. Years, years <laughs> ago, years ago, man, my uh, my brother had a tryout with the Chicago Bulls, mm. and he was he was he was the last one to get cut off the roster. And he was sitting with uh, he was sitting with Phil Jackson, and Phil Jackson said, "Why should I keep you?" Mm. And and he looked at him. He said, "Phil, you don't need me. You got Michael and Scotty." You don't need me," he said. "I can tell people about Jesus, but you don't need me." <laughs> and that's that. That's what I feel like, man. S- Michael Jordan, and I don't mean to blaspheme King Jesus, but Michael Jordan has invited us to be a part of his team. Yep. Man, all all we got to do is get him the ball. All we got to yep. do is get him the ball. But, yeah. You know who who was it? Was it Kukos? I, I I forgotten the name. You know Kukos. I'm I'm mispronouncing it. I'm sure. Tony Kukos. Yeah. Tony, Tony Kukos. Is, Tony came off the bench and was the perfect sixth man, right? And That's all it. God is saying is, when I call you off the bench, Come throw on. me the ball. <laughs> Don't throw it to the other team. Don't make another basket going the other way. All I want you to do is to come off the bench and get me the ball. I got this. But That's I it. need someone to come off the bench and throw me the ball. You got to get in the game. Gotta you got to play. Game. You got to play, man. You got to play what was your part, man. That's it. That's it. What was your favorite um, part about the movie or the favorite part, your favorite part of the process? Well, the favorite part of the process, to be honest with you, is not in the movie, is the making of the movie. What I mean, and here's what I mean by that. We we were disciples making a movie about discipleship. Let's go. The, the set, the Kendrick Brothers set is a slice of heaven in that they have allowed themselves to become such people that disciple the people that disciple the people that do the work Mm. and prayer devotions laying on of hands you know people just encouraging each other uh laughter camaraderie you know fellowship around some food you know all of the above man it's the way it's done not just what's done yeah. That is mind boggling because you don't even want to leave the set. Come on. You know, when, when people talk about, you know, doing 10, 12 hours on a film, you don't care nah. <laughs> because nah. it's like the brethren being the brethren together to do what God has said. 
And that's what church is supposed to be all the time. The kingdom is supposed to be all the time. How we're supposed right. to be getting things done, no matter what it is that we're getting done all the time. And that is the best part of it all. I love that. Why Why would you want to leave the presence of God? He's the there with you, man. The anointing to be, to thrive together, to breathe yeah. that air together is, um, there's nothing else like it. Man, when you think about the men that have shaped you and the men that have been influential in your life, what are some commonalities that they shared? What What were some traits that you were looking for that you picked up on that you now pass on? The it's it's really kind of a oxymoron for me. It's like a, it's a it's like a backdoor. Let me let me say it. Let me answer the question first, now, and I and I'll tell you what I mean. Um, there are a few men that have passed through my life that have been nurturers that have been um, um, touched and, and, and given themselves to God enough mm. to be a breath of fresh air to me. You know, I, I will have to say though, in that process, it's been so far and few between that mm. it's, it, God has used me in the opposite way. And, and, and here's what I mean. I have desired, I have sought after, I have wanted that kind of men to be in my life and to nurture me so much and didn't get it mm. that it made me determined to be that for someone else. Come on. Because I knew what I could have been, how much further I could have been. And I watched a uh, 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 certain, certain young men receive it that didn't have a heart for it. You know, the Proverbs talks about, you know, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, what, what's the point of, of, of a man having in his hand the, the price of, of knowledge when he has no heart for it? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like giving somebody money for tuition and, you know, they go blow it. That's so, right. so, so for me, I wanted it so bad and got it so, so, got so little of it. I do relish the little that I got, let, without yeah. a doubt. Um, and there were some good men in my life. But the extent to which I think that I could have grown faster, younger, uh, I wanted yeah. it so bad that it made me um, say, you know what? I'm going, I, I will be that for someone. And and, and it, that, it's one of the things that drives me um, to be that for other people. I know, I know the importance of it and the difference that it makes. Yeah. Yeah. And that speaks to your character again, because you're not saying um, you're not you're not playing the role of a victim. You're not saying because I didn't get this um, now, I can't do anything about right. it. You're saying, no, 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 because I didn't get this. I didn't get the head start that could have propelled me maybe other places. So now I'm going to be that head start for others. I Correct. love that. Correct. And that's that's again that's a picture of the gospel it's a picture of redemption it's a picture of restoration you're going to take all that the locusts have eaten and you're going to make sure they don't eat that much in the future for somebody else somebody it's else yeah. go back go back and make sure that you protect them from the pitfalls you know that's yeah. the whole point once i mean by the grace of god I, I i i was able or really god was able to get to me the importance of the written word and by the Holy Spirit, he forged me, conformed me to a place of obedience to that written word to the point where now the relationship of hearing the Holy Spirit is just how I live. Mm. But that life had to now get me to the point of imparting it or the importance of it to a younger age. It took Come me on. too long to get to that place and point. Um, I would have loved to have gotten there earlier. You know, um, it would have been, man, it would have been great to get there earlier. And now yeah. I, 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 I am, you know, it, it, it risks, risks my heart apart to think that I wouldn't get someone who's 19, 20 to that place and point if they will just allow me to it, 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 um, um, that's, that's, that, that, that's my passion to get someone there earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I hope, I hope the men listening to this man, hear that and hear your heart behind that, because that's so important. Again, we're not dealing with, with good men and bad men. 
we're dealing with good men and men who want to be good. They just don't know how. You know, I think about I think about men's ministry in the 90s and the enemy was passivity, right? Everybody wanted to fight passivity. Well, today the enemy is ignorance. Ooh. And we had a generation of men grow up not knowing what it means to be men. Mm. And and they just need someone to step in and say, hey, listen, I'm not perfect, but I know the way. Literally, I know the way. Right. And we just point them. We don't have to reinvent manhood. No. God gave us the picture of the greatest man ever in King no. Jesus. That's we right. just got to point to him. That's right. That's right. That's he, it, man. He is our prototype. That's right. You know? And all you have to do is mimic the prototype. You don't have to guess at it. You don't have to any of that mimic the prototype that's right as dear children imitate their father you mimic the prototype and what we get an opportunity to do as as collaborators with god is to be a mimicker that you can touch come on you know what i'm saying on your way past the mimicker that you that you've mimicked all your life because the whole point is to get you to become greater than i am better than i am younger than i am faster than i am that you can excel beyond me i have to shoot you through my bow and let you hit the bullseye the height to which i go is to is 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 the height to which i can even propel you further than myself that's the whole point that's it man that's it that's the whole point yeah and and you and i are sitting here because we were standing on somebody else's shoulders somebody else's shoulders these men that have come before us and really that's you know, that's what the movie, that's what the movie is all about. The the movies in theaters, you know, I love a part of your story is, man, I wish I would have caught this earlier, but God in his goodness has put your heart, your passion for discipleship on a big screen where millions are going to see it. Yeah. I mean, he's making up on lost time. Dude, that, that's what I'm saying. Conference, it, that, that, that kind of stuff you start to, when you start to meditate on that, it's so overwhelming that yeah. it makes you cry because it's overwhelming and you you can't handle i can't handle the power of that yeah are you kidding me you know so that is what we're and, and and something that you said a few minutes ago man that i want to uh, uh uh piggyback on and 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 the men that have been we stand on, on on shoulders one of the things that god got over to me was that even though i didn't have as many around me as i would have wanted there were so many that I could see from afar. Let's go. That I could stand on their shoulders, whether it's through books, whether it's That's pastors right. that are in a different country. What they are, you can't say that you don't have examples. You may not have them hands on with you, but there are so many men that have given their lives to Christ that are living a in, integrity filled life that you can see them you can read after them and you can you can mimic them um just the same and so there's no excuse for not having examples in your life man they are they're they're all around you you may have to go and find one but they're there they're they're there man the bible called that the great cloud of witness yes sir and and it's a great cloud man brother thank you so much for for honoring us and and being here with us for sharing with us man i uh we have a lot of people come through the show and and I tell people we meet like-minded people but every now and then you meet a like-hearted brother amen man and you man you've been like-hearted since the since the moment you and I met and I, I'm thankful for that the forge in theaters now you can check it out um, link to tickets are in the show notes um, don't just buy one ticket buy eight tickets and bring people with you yes. the message is that is that good you're gonna see my man cameron on the screen um working in excellence doing it to the glory of god cam thank you so much for being with us brother we're praying for you man we're with you and uh just just wanted to say say we're grateful man appreciate you man thank you so much